All right, guys, welcome to the stream. I just started the stream and we should be live, should be live, should be live. So let's take a look at the chat. Uh, all right, so welcome everyone to this live stream. Uh, we're going to wait um, a couple of minutes for people to uh, enter our conversation. And uh, the topic of today is of course the Bitcoin price, which has gone absolutely ballistic insane in the <laughs> last couple of days and i mean even even if you are uh, even if you are experienced within crypto you've been in crypto these movements are not usual to say to say the least and so we are going to discuss what is going on and uh, have a conversation so it's not just me telling you guys i'm also curious what what you, you think as well and another thing is that we're going to talk about Christmas and why Bitcoin is so important now in these Christmas times all right welcome Cabo one two three I love you too my friend thank you very much let's go let's make some money my nice uh, Slav uh, yeah Belarus is Slavic for sure uh, Ivan what's up man what, what is going on John John Doe um, 20k coming and going coinbase membership growing for sk day yeah so more and more people are joining uh i think we all feel that we all see see the these movements in the market i mean i myself have uh, many friends who know very little about crypto friends from high school friends friends from uh, uh, middle school and even younger <laughs> friends who are now noticing this Bitcoin movement, Bitcoin price, cryptocurrencies, and they're asking Ivan, is it too late to invest? So it might be the case that Bitcoin is reaching out to the masses. It might very well be the case that we are at some kind of threshold and that that is the reason. But we're going to talk about more, uh, more about that today. Chat is frozen uh, on the on the screen. Hmm, interesting. It shouldn't be frozen. Why is that? Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Uh, let's see. I mean, this OBS thing. Uh, let's see. Browser. Yeah, just give me some minutes. We're we're just waiting for people to join. So I'm just gonna try to do this. Uh, how can I copy copy website address like this? Okay, let's see what happens. Did this work? All right, it seems to work. How is the sound, guys? How is the sound? Tell me how the sound is. Okay, welcome. I'm so happy to see so that so many people join. We're still going to wait a couple of minutes uh, before we jump into this uh, live stream more seriously and start the conversation more seriously. Uh, so Efrain Kennedy says that we're going to go up to 20,000 this year. I mean, it's <laughs> very much possible. Uh, I mean, for sure, I don't think any of us could predict uh, 16,500. I mean, you you would be very bold if you said 16,500 just, you know, two months ago. And uh, maybe you cannot be too bold when predicting Bitcoin price. Uh, Maybe it's impossible to be too bold. Could very well be the case. Right, let's wait a couple of... Hi from Utgest, uh, Frank Stolz. Is that in Belgium or something? Uh, welcome, John Doe. Welcome, uh, Tech Genius. Uh, greetings, greetings. Fast chat, Bitcoin Cash, January Dump. Yeah, I mean, it could very well go to 20k. I mean, 20k tomorrow. <laughs> uh, hello, Ivan. Greeting from Earth, says Chris Chalfun. What is going on, Chris? What is going on, Chris? Very happy to have you here. Hi from Norway. Hello from Sweden. So Norway crossed uh, the Bitcoin price of 100 uh, Norwegian crowns yesterday. Sweden crossed the price of 100,000 Swedish crowns. Uh, so no Norway crossed 100,000 Norwegian crowns yesterday and Sweden crossed 100 Swedish crowns uh, a couple of days ago. What is going on in Australia? We have Australia in the house, 25K. Amsterdam, 
uh, what is going on Amsterdam, Josh, Joss. Uh, so we have, we have people rolling in. That's fun to see, fun to see. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. So, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, first of all, we're going to discuss the Bitcoin action, Bitcoin price. It's been completely, completely insane. And the thing is, if you go to my YouTube, you take a look at the most viewed video and the most view, viewed video on my channel currently is the video I did this summer. And, uh, uh, and so in that video, I'm talked about, I talked about whether it's too late to invest in Bitcoin. And you know, at that point I was like, guys, it's insane. Bitcoin just crossed $3,000 or something. And of course it, I would never imagine that in December, just in the beginning of December, it would be 16,000. Uh, 500 and that's the thing you can never be too bold when it comes to this uh, crypto uh, crypto market and that is why it's so exciting and that is why it's so fun to be in as well uh richard hart said 20k go sweden yeah go sweden for sure hey i, I just want to brag about something can i do that of course i can so uh, so in sweden we have this list uh each year they pub publish this list of uh, people who do uh, gr great things during the year. And I'm very honored and humbled guys to be on this list. And in fact, it's not just me. It's, I mean, we are on this list because people are talking about cryptocurrencies. It is on this national list of, uh, you know, people who did something great this year. And so I'm very thankful, very honored to be here. And uh, this really spreads the word about cryptocurrencies because, uh, you know, all of these industry CEOs will read this and then they will see what is going on with cryptocurrencies. Why is this guy talking about cryptocurrencies on this list? And it will, of course, wake up more interest about crypto. And uh, oh, yeah, I mean, you don't even see it I, because I don't share it. <laughs> OK, l let me just show you. Uh, I thought I had my uh, let me see. Uh, window capture uh yeah i mean i, I thought you, you saw it but you, you don't see it heal a list down there hold on bam okay now you should see it okay so you see uh bam so I, i'm in the fourth place there is uh, someone came in the first place someone came in the second and third place so i i'm in the fourth place but still i mean it's uh I mean, I'm very humbled and it is an achievement for me, of course, but also for cryptocurrencies and blockchain and the whole and the whole sphere. So, yeah, now that you have seen it, I, I can remove it from <laughs> from the screen. Uh, yes. All right. So let's start off by talking about what is going on with the price. And uh, of course, one reason why this might be going on is that more and more people are learning about this. More and more people are joining the field. As I, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, you know we have uh, my friends uh, who are who never talked about crypto just a few a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and are now highly interested in investing. They're not necessarily interested in learning about the technology but they are interested in uh, investing and uh, you see more and more people who are not technical people who are not finance people they just see the price explode and now they're also joining the field uh, so that could be one uh, side of the story and that is the positive side of the story however there is of course a uh, a negative side of the story as well and this is something that uh, i've been thinking about and uh, i know uh, some of my friends and colleagues are also thinking about this side of the story. And that is that we have these futures coming up uh, this month, um, Bitcoin futures. And uh, this whole bull market, this whole, you know, uh, rushing in price could theoretically be manipulated. Because imagine if we pump up the price today, we have so many bitcoins, we have so many uh, coins. And then when these futures are released, we short Bitcoin using these futures. And then we just uh, sell off everything and push and push the price down. Uh, so we sell off our uh, uh, our coins that we purchased before the futures. Basically, we purchase now as we speak. So, I mean, there are some different theories going on. And definitely when these futures are released, uh, it will be interesting to see 
if there is you know some player who bought a lot of bitcoin and now shores the future and uh, sells his or her or their bitcoin definitely it will be a uh, a, a day to to keep an eye on uh, and so it is something to keep in mind of course i don't know uh, nobody really knows and we'll just we'll just have to see uh, what do you think, guys? We love Andreas Antonopoulos, right? Gum healer. Yes, uh, we do indeed. We do indeed. And I have an interview with Andreas on my channel. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's uh, It was a few weeks ago. He was here in Sweden. And uh, nah, it was absolutely amazing meeting him. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So big money is coming into crypto. That's for sure. And... Uh, I think, guys, when big money comes into crypto, the only <laughs> the only people that will make money out of this big money movement is big money. Uh, and so, I mean, we we should keep that in mind. That's for sure. That's for sure. But we and this changes will happen to crypto in that sense that it is now reaching the uh, the serious money, the big money, the institutional money. And we will have to see how that develops for sure. Let's see what is going on. Okay, my <laughs> okay, so I said something and my Siri woke up for no reason. All right, right, right. Uh, maybe ask a gold expert, analyze this. This is Wall Street pumping it, don't you think so? I mean, it could very well be, could very well be. It, uh, because we haven't seen these huge movements. We haven't seen these uh, huge movements before. And um, it is indeed very interesting. Maybe it's all, you know, natural market forces that more and more people are discovering Bitcoin. Uh, is this a bubble? So this is a very interesting question, whether Bitcoin is a bubble, whether cryptocurrencies are a bubble. And I think we need to keep in mind that uh, all new technologies tend to form bubbles. All new technologies do that. I mean, the latest example is Internet. Internet, of course, changed the world, but the excitement that Internet created around uh, 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 you know, in people and uh, all of these new companies and uh, stock prices just going through the roof was just overwhelming. And the technology developed slower than people anticipated. And so it created a, this financial bubble. The same thing is with um, uh, automobiles. I did this video during the summer as well that, you know, when uh, automobiles were a new thing, when cars were a new thing, there were maybe hundred different car manufacturers and there were car manufacturers start, starting each week new car manufacturers but then of course it's um, but then of course currently we have just a couple a few maybe 10 or 20 car manufacturers in the uh, in the world that are significant so it might be the case that we see something similar with cryptocurrencies that now everyone is doing an ICO everyone is interested in launching a coin it might be the future of a crypto economy that every store will have its own coin, that every business will have its own coin, that is for sure. Uh, but it might also be that this uh, new coin hype dies down, that people are will not longer be excited to create uh, ICOs every week and uh, de develop uh, ICOs at the same rate as we currently do. And so I think bubbles is a natural human thing humans uh, get overexcited when it comes to new technology blockchain is a new amazing technology that will revolutionize the world that's for sure and that is the kind of thing that usually creates uh, a bubble now is are we in a bubble currently or will it take a few more years i don't know and i think no one knows for sure and uh, uh, that is something we need to keep in mind that whenever we are in a bubble, you don't realize it. It's only afterwards that you realize. Because when you are in a bubble, there are so many reasons why you're not in a bubble and uh, also many reasons why you are in a bubble. So it's very high to uh, hard to decide because, I mean, on one hand, you have these reasons that tell you, no, it's not a bubble, it's perfectly fine. And on the other hand, you have these reasons that tell you we are in a bubble. So you, you don't really know. But when you experience the bubble and you look back that is when you see uh, that of course it was a bubble and now you know that those uh, that those reasons 
uh, were correct, namely those reasons that uh, told you that it is a bubble. Uh, and so I, I think we might definitely see some kind of huge correction in uh, in a few years. Uh, and when we t talk about bubble, I mean, that is just my speculation. Uh, because um, as I told you, my belief is that new technology, new amazing technology creates bubble. Uh, creates bubbles because people are overexcited. Technology is developing slower in the short term that people anticipate. People think that it will happen along faster in the short term, but the technology also develops a lot, uh, a lot faster than people anticipate in the long term. So people think that technology will go fast in the short term, but in the short term, technology is slow. In the long term, though people underestimate the speed of technology. So it will just go slow, 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 slow. Maybe the slowness in the beginning will cause some kind of financial bubble that people will get disappointed with cryptocurrencies. People will get disappointed with decentralized applications, but then it will just accelerate and go through the roof. The, the pace of acceleration, technological improvement will go through the roof. Uh, and so that is i mean that that is how i think when it comes to when it comes to bubbles and that technologies tend to create bubbles new amazing technologies tend to create create bubbles and so guys um, besides the bitcoin price what i wanted to talk to you about uh, to uh, today is uh, christmas namely that christmas is coming christmas is just uh, in a few weeks and we need to think fast about christmas presents so so who here has some kind of uh, Christmas present going on? Have you thought about Christmas presents? Uh, I mean, I have, but uh, I have a better Christmas present for you. And that is cryptocurrencies. Because something that we need to keep in mind is that uh, in order to cross the chasm, to go from this community of, of early visionaries, uh, that we currently are to in order to go from this community of early adopters and cross the chasm to the uh, to the mainstream adoption to mainstream we need to get cryptocurrencies in the hands of normal people that is a very important thing and i had grant cardone on this channel and uh, that is what what he told us well that people need to realize how real how easy and how practical cryptocurrencies are and giving away bitcoin as a christmas christmas present is an excellent 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 thing because imagine you give it to your grandmother for example and if she really understands it if you make your grandmother understand the cryptocurrencies i mean it will be hard it will not be easy to make your grandma understand but you know once she understand it understands it once she really gets into it imagine how many people she will tell i mean she will go around the neighborhood and tell all her friends and in some it is also a, a bit different between different cultures but you know in some cultures for example uh, in spain or in southern europe it, when I visit, at least, it feels like older people, they always hang, hang together, they, uh, they spend time together with the neighbors and they talk and uh, rumors spread and talk spread. And so imagine if this one grandma understands Bitcoin, she knows how a wallet works. If you manage to explain how a wallet works, suddenly she will go around and tell the whole neighborhood how it works. And by teaching your grandmother, you have indirectly taught the whole neighborhood. So we have to keep in mind that this development is not, uh, is not linear. When you teach your grandmother, it is not plus one. You're not teaching one person. You are essentially teaching 200 people. And so... Uh, of course, teaching your grandmother how to use Bitcoin is not an easy task. I do, <laughs> I, I, I do indeed understand that. But, but it is the mindset we need to have. If you teach your parents, it will be the same thing. So by just spreading the knowledge, by just, uh, by just spreading the practical, the practicality of Bitcoin, by making people feel Bitcoin that you know now I have it in my phone, now I can transact with it. Now I can be a part of the global cryptocurrency community. 
that that is where we need to work and there are a couple of ways you can give away bitcoin i mean uh, someone asked me uh, by sending an email ivan how can i give away bitcoin and there are a couple of different uh, of different reasons uh, of different ways you can do that so one way of course is a paper wallet you can go to uh, a website like bitaddress.org or <coughs> or bitcoinpaperwallet.com so there are a, a couple of different websites you can use in order to generate a paper wallet and uh, you would then give it to your friends and family and they would use their phone to import this paper wallet this is one way second way is of course um, buying a hardware wallet and loading it with uh, cryptocurrencies and then giving it uh, away and the, the third way is to uh, is to <laughs> use some kind of service such su such as bitforcoin.org or something else and basically you can enter an amount and they will send you a gift card with that amount uh, to uh, to your house for example so giving away Bitcoin is an excellent, excellent idea that I think uh, we should think about and that we should really give people an opportunity to experience cryptocurrencies on a practical level. Hey, by the way, who, who uses crypto kit kittens? Do you have crypto kittens? I, I read, you know what, I, I read that, I mean, this crypto kitten was sold for $100,000. Uh, hundred thousand dollars guys for a digital cat uh and the thing is do we know that this person sold to himself or not because that is the thing i i can't imagine someone buying a kitten a digital cat for a hundred thousand dollars i mean it must uh, or maybe it's someone who just made a lot of money on uh, the whole cryptocurrency market and was like you know what? I'll ju I'll just buy this digital cat. Uh, so the, the you you have the cat, uh, not yet <laughs> kittens to the moon. So, I mean, I definitely think that this cat idea is. Uh, I mean, it is funny. Some people say it's ridiculous. Some people say that. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's a bad use case of Ethereum or whatever. I I don't agree. I think crypto kittens is an excellent use case. Why? Because it is demonstrating how this technology works in a fun and easy to understand way that people can try these crypto kittens in order to be a part of the crypto kitten community. You have to download a uh, MetaMask. You need to understand how to use uh, how to use uh, Ethereum, how it works. And yes, it is silly. Yes, it is, you know, if in the grand picture of things, it is not the most useful of use cases when it comes to, you know, curing hyperinflation or decreasing corruption. But from an educational standpoint, from a media standpoint, yeah, I, I, I think it's an excellent project. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's, and it's just gotten so much uh, attention, which uh, which I really, really love. And in fact, they they wrote to me back. I mean, back in the days, a couple of months ago, maybe, and uh, uh, they wanted to to do a video on the channel. And I just, I mean, I just read the uh, headline, and it sounded so absurd. So I, I didn't even reply. But <laughs> but now, of course, it's a huge success. And another, I mean, another thing is that I've heard several people talk about this crypto cat kitten as um, uh, as an overnight success that, you know, these guys just made this random dap and now it's so huge. But guys, the thing we need to keep in mind is that there are no overnight successes. I do not believe in overnight successes at all. Even if something looks simple, like they just created this simple cat app on the blockchain and now it's going bananas, it is never an overnight success. Those people have uh, most likely had so many failures before and trying to create different games and uh, dApps. Uh, and uh, it, I mean, it's just something I, I think about when I see that people are like, oh, this is just an overnight success, um, su such a silly thing. I mean, it's not an overnight success and creating something silly that is addictive, that is viral, it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. Otherwise, everyone would be a millionaire and everyone would be a famous web or uh, game developer, for sure. Uh, all right.
right. Bit Bitcoin is a bubble and eventually will end the pump. Maybe, maybe that is the case. Uh, and so that is, of course, the question. Is this a pump? Is this some kind of pump when it comes to the release of futures that someone is preparing to uh, building up uh, some kind of, you know, uh, holding in Bitcoin in order to use that when futures are released or not? Uh, Bitcoin to rule them all. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin currently is proving to be the the king of cryptocurrencies, as uh, uh, as uh, Charlie Lee said on Twitter. EOS will be an over year success. Yeah, I mean, EOS is very interesting. Very interesting. I met uh, Brock Pierce in uh, Singapore. We talked a bit about EOS and uh, his philosophy when it comes to Ethereum versus EOS. It is actually on the channel as well. It, it was on the panel. You can take a look. And uh, the way he sees it is that it's all, it, it's not a zero sum game. Ethereum versus EOS, it's not a zero sum game. And uh, it's, <coughs> it's room for both players. And for me, it's just very interesting to see how the market economics will switch. So currently we have Ethereum as the main platform for ICOs, as the main platform for fundraising. And that is really the Ethereum's use case currently. It, it's, it's not the, you know, the, this grand vision of Ethereum that it should only be used for crowdfunding, but it currently is. So what I'm very curious in, what role will EOS be? Will EOS be also a fundraising platform, basically, when it comes to the practical use case that people are using it for mostly? Or will we be able to uh, actually run uh, other uh, applications as well in an efficient way? I mean, in a way that makes sense. And uh, with the release of crypto, <laughs> crypto kitties, of course, Ethereum now have entered the gaming sphere as well with, with an actual use case of a, a gaming app and actually successful, successful gaming application applications. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, it's getting kind of late. It's 11, uh, 11 in the evening, but uh, I thought I would do this, uh, do this live stream uh, anyway. DTube. Yeah, maybe I should try DTube. Uh, also, if you are hmm, if you are in Sweden, Stockholm, we will have an event on the 19th of December. Uh, and uh, just look in the description after this video. I will post it in the description here. Uh, so if you want, it's and it is an event that uh, I'm organizing together with some friends. And it's going to be a Stockholm blockchain event. We're going to invite speakers and we're going to hang out. Just wanted to 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 tell you guys. Mark Fredrickson, thank you very much. Hey Ivan, love your videos. Uh, do you mine Bitcoin? I mean, I mined way back uh, in 2013. I mean, I, I just was curious how it works. I tried mining, but currently I do I do not mine. Uh, Ivan, do you still believe in Golem? I haven't heard much from Golem. Uh, what is going on with Golem? Maybe, <laughs> maybe someone can uh, enlighten me on that. You should try DTube. Yeah, I, I, I should, I should. Are you Russian? I mean, that is the uh, most, uh, the biggest mystery. Am I Russian or am I not Russian? So I was born in Belarus uh, and we moved to Sweden when uh, when I was very young. I was uh, eight, eight or seven years old. So, I mean, all my adult and uh, teenage life, I've lived in Sweden. And therefore, I feel... I personally feel Swedish for the most part, but I do I do speak Russian and uh, I mean I, I listen to Russian music. I I have a couple of Russian friends as well, but I haven't been to Belarus in uh, in a very very long time. Uh, and I mean I f people find it very interesting. Is is Ivan Russian or is Ivan Swedish? It's you know it's either or. But personally, I was born in Belarus uh, uh, and also <laughs> Belarus, Russia. Um, but uh, I was born in Belarus. Uh, I've grown up in Sweden. I mean, I've been educated and basically lived all my adult teenage and teenage life here. And therefore, because I have most of my life experiences here uh, and I currently live here, uh, that, that is why I personally feel Swedish more uh, more than uh, than Belarusian, but of course, I mean, I am, 
uh, I still watch the news and sometimes uh, listen to music uh, as well f- uh, from Russia and and Belarus. Uh, great combo, Belarus and Sweden. Yeah. Say something in Russian. Привет, меня зовут Иван. Я говорю по-русски. Ivan needs to send some crypto. Yeah, maybe I should start saying, you know, to send. There are channels doing this uh, <laughs> crypto, se- sending crypto to, uh, what do you say, to, to the viewers. Should I do that? You know, like, uh, you comment your addresses, then I pick an address and you you get some kind of, uh, some kind of amount back. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know what I feel about that, but maybe it's it's a good thing. Are you a Swedish citizen? Yes, yes I am. Uh, and I mean, I've been that for m- most of my life. Uh, also, how old are you? I'm 21, guys. I'm 21. Uh, okay, many questions about IOTA. So IOTA has also seen this huge, huge rise in the past days. In fact, I have a friend who has profited a lot from <laughs> did you hack the US election? <laughs> Sorry guys, it, it was all me. Yeah, so uh, IOTA has gone up uh, through the roof uh, the, the past couple of days and a lot of questions are of course about IOTA. Many people want to buy IOTA who are not even in cryptocurrency field. And uh, I mean, uh, I've, I've done a couple of videos on IOTA. Uh, what I think is interesting with IOTA is, of course, this whole Tangle situation, that instead of blockchain, you have a Tangle, you verify transactions to send a transaction. So that is very interesting. However, what I mean, what is worrying me is this uh, coordinator, uh, co- coordinator issue uh, that is currently present, this uh, central part. And uh, I, of course, hope that this vision of IOTA will play out as, as it should. Uh, and that we will see this speed that is promised. And IOTA is a very interesting project for sure. And uh, uh, congratulations to everyone holding holding IOTA because it's really been amazing this, uh, this couple of days, IOTA just going through the roof. Uh, I was your 20th subscriber. <laughs> I don't, I mean, uh, I don't think he was, uh, because when I actually started this channel uh, in 2011 or something, it, it I mean, it, it was a long time ago. However, I didn't talk about crypto. Back then, I, I did HTML and CSS videos, and I, did it, I didn't go, you know, I didn't go all in as I do currently with crypto. I maybe uploaded once a week and uh, I uploaded maybe altogether five videos, but then I removed all of them. And then I did some, uh, then I did some uh, uh, gym videos, believe it or not. (laughs) I I tried to be a gym channel also, but then uh, it didn't really work out. But those videos were remaining on the channel. So I left the channel in 2000. I mean, I don't, I don't even remember what year it was. It was a couple of years back. I left the channel and when I came back, it had maybe 200 subscribers, 200 subscribers. And uh, that is when I started doing uh, crypto. And that is when I went all in with cryptocurrencies and uh, uh, and um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, IOTA, all of that stuff. And that that is how Ivanotech really started. And so, I mean, uh, I don't think, I don't think that you were my 20th subscriber because my 20th subscriber must have been someone who either enjoyed uh, gym or uh, HTML and CSS. And I even, th- yeah, I, and those HTML and CSS videos were even in Swedish. So uh, I think someone from Sweden must have been my 20th uh, subscriber. Uh, you are a skinny. <laughs> you are a skinny skeleton. What do you mean, Jim? <laughs> uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, I don't think I'm so skinny to be <laughs> to, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I saw an interesting question somewhere. I don't even remember. Um, when is the Stockholm? Okay, the Stockholm event is in uh, uh, on twenty on the nineteenth 
of uh, uh, on the 19th of uh, December so it's very soon and I am going to show you the event page so let's see uh, we just released the event today actually uh, and started inviting people and our friends today so we will see how it goes I've never you know I've never organized events before so this will be an experience for sure but I think it will be it will be a success. It feels like it because we have uh, amazing speakers. We have uh, a lot of interest in that event from the you know from journalists and from uh, uh, other. Um, let's see if you can see my thing. Yeah. Anyway, I, I mean this is too complicated to. I'll just link it in the description, but it's called, I mean, if you go to Facebook and you just search Stockholm blockchain event, just just search Stockholm blockchain event, you should get it. You should get it. And it it is on the 19th of December uh, here in Stockholm at Hotel Hobo. We have this hotel called Hobo. It's very nice, but it has a very interesting name, uh, Hobo. All right, guys. I mean, it was very nice. Uh, uh, chatting with you doing this live stream interaction and you know what we will do some kind of weekly live stream here on the channel uh, because now I'm waiting for my camera gear <laughs> will you buy Zlatan coin <laughs> I mean if Zlatan released his coin I would buy it for sure uh, so yeah uh, I, you know what I'm thinking that I I will try to do this weekly videos and it will be called blockchain show, weekly blockchain show, and it will be more of a professional, uh, you know, it will be a good camera, I will be sitting in some kind of sofa, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, just a teaser. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it works out, but it's just a teaser. I want to do more live. I love doing live, it's just, you know, finding the time, finding the spot to do live, that is hard. And also, sometimes when I have some kind of agenda I want to tell, some kind of topic I want to tell, it's not always that I want to do it live, because I feel like when I don't do it live, I have the control over exactly what I say, and then if I explain something in a bad way, I can redo it. So that is why live is... Uh, uh, is hard to do in an you know in a educational and pedagogical way to be pedagogical live because you have to you have to really succeed on the first try because there is no way to going back and editing, but but this weekly uh, block sh uh, blockchain show will be more relaxed and we'll talk about the markets, we'll talk about the ICOs. Many people are asking about different you know specific ICOs and. And of course, in this industry, there is no way for anyone to really know all of the ICOs. It's like when you have a guy that is very experienced in the stock market and you ask him, hey, what do you think about this random IPO I just read about? I mean, he will not have any idea because just because you know the stock market, it doesn't mean that you know every single IPO and you have an opinion about every single IPO. So the same is with... Um, when people ask me about uh, uh, ICOs and most often, you know, you go to events and someone asks, hey, Ivan, what do you think about this uh, ICO I just read about? It seems interesting. And uh, uh, I mean, the chances are that uh, I've not heard of it because there are just, you know, 20 ICOs per day. Uh, and so in this show, uh, weekly block blockchain show, I'm thinking we could do that uh, you guys can send in ICOs you want to discuss and then we can we can talk about that because uh, I want to talk more and uh, more about how you how how I think at least when it comes to a project when it comes to one particular uh, blockchain project you're interested in and we can analyze them together and uh, look at from different perspectives uh, I, i'm not sure how it's going to work out i'm, I'm going to experiment we're going to try uh, however more live streams uh, i like i would love to do uh, more uh, live streams for sure so guys thank you very much for joining me today and it was a pleasure hanging out with you and have a great great day or evening it's evening for sure here in sweden stockholm all right guys goodbye and I'm going to end the stream. Bam.